Hi, this is Sean Delt Joyce, and wait, welcome to Painting Sunsets in Spanish Moss with Pastel. Before I do a painting, I pick out my palette based on the color sketch and the value study. Here I'm testing some of the colors on my photo reference. I usually print out photo references on paper. And when I choose my pastels, they're based on the complements. I work with a complementary palette. In this case, oranges and blues. The pastels I'm using are Mount Vision pastel primarily. These are very soft. I also supplement them with a couple of hard pastels, which are new and new pastels uh, for the first layers. So Mount Vision sells individually if you live in the Tampa area or online. Uh, you can get sets through Dick Blick and uh, Dakota Pastels. The, the complementary pastel is warmer and cooler versions of the two complements plus the colors they make when you mix them together. I'm starting out the sketch using the rule of thirds. I've divided my composition into thirds horizontally and vertically. I'm sketching with one of the colors I'll be using later. This helps me to <clears throat> incorporate that color into the final piece. Now, I have just indicated roughly where I want to have the composition. And I'm setting the sun as the focal point right under the curve of that branch at the intersection of the, the lines which is about where you would want to put a focal point. I'm happy with that composition. So now for the painting. I always make a decision based on what techniques I'm going to use and whether I'm working from the back forward. So the technique I'm using first is blending. And here I'm doing a test run on the apple to give you an idea of how I'm going to do the blending for the sky. I'm blocking in with a very dark blue at the top and I'm going to get lighter as I get to the horizon. That will help create the illusion of perspective. The darkest colors in the sky are always directly overhead. The lighter colors are always towards the horizon. I've blocked in with a soft sky blue and left some space for the branches so that the tooth of the paper is cleaner there. I'm going to juice it up with a little bit of blue violet right at the intersection of some of the warmer colors. So this will help transition. And then I'm putting in a transition color which is not a pure yellow, it's more of a <clears throat> like an off-white or a taupe color. This will help to transition from the blue and blue violet to the orange. Don't want to go directly because that might make a greenish mud. Instead the transition color helps to stitch those two colors together a little more seamlessly. Now that I have some of the oranges in place I'm going to warm up the horizon line with a little bit of orange red right at the base. This is a harder pastel. It's actually a Rembrandt. I'm putting it on top of the soft pastel so that it will mix the two. The harder pastel will blend the softer pastel. So I'm using the stick to blend here. I'm also warming up the edge right where the sun will be so that there will be some contrast against the sun. Now that I have the background entirely blocked in, all of the colors are in place, I can blend. So I'm cleaning off my brushes in pastel. You blend with your fingers, so your fingers or your brushes. And I'm starting up in the darker blue and pushing it into the tooth of the support. So that way it is smooth and clean and you get a sense of texture. The sky is very smooth. The leaves will be very rough against it. I clean my fingers before I go into the subtle blends, the subtle gradations in the sky, and I soften them, push them back a little bit. This is the transition color. 
if I jump on top of the orange, I'll pollute it with the blue. So as you can see, I did that and I'm covering it up now and just cleaning up those blends so that there's a soft gradation up in the sky. Once I've achieved that, that pushes the sky into the background. That helps me to um, create that illusion of perspective that I'm looking for in painting. The next effect I want is scumbling. Scumbling is when you drag one pastel on top of another and you don't blend. You just leave it rough. And I'm gonna do this to create the illusion of thin clouds up in the sky. So the clouds towards the middle are thicker and spaced further apart. As I move to the horizon, those clouds become thinner and closer together. So they look more like thin lines. I'm using a light yellow. So there's a warmth up in the sky, the illusion of sunlight. And it also helps to create, um, set the stage for when I put in the sun. I really want that sun to pop. So it needs to have a glow around it and some dark orange behind it. Now I'm putting in some of the trees on the horizon. I want those trees to be misty. So I'm creating a little mist back there and breaking it up with some of the sky color so it doesn't look too even. This is a typical Florida landscape. There are no hills or mountains in Florida. So most of the background is gonna be tree line. This is just a touch of the sun peeking out from behind the clouds. It's the brightest area. So it'll really draw your eye in, especially with that dark branch above. And I'm just gonna further that effect by putting some warm reflecting in the water and in the grasses underneath. So that's where the orange line came in. The next technique is to use the side of the pastel and scumble the tree line on top of what I've already blended in. So I'm just using the side of the pastel to do this and rolling the pastel slightly as I go so that the trees are not perfect or even. I don't want it to be a straight line of trees. I want it to be a broken tree line. And that helps to push the sky into the background and create a middle ground for the grasses. So the middle ground is the next step in this painting. I really want to create a sense of light and grass in that middle ground. So I'm going to be scumbling with a side stroke. This color I'm using is a warm, it's a more of a neutral color, neutral to warm. It's almost an ochre, like a yellow ochre. And it's going to be for some of the grasses in the middle ground. Now, it's an optical illusion when you're painting marshes and rivers to see the water curve or, or come at an angle. Water is always flat. So I want to paint it as flat and make the grasses at an angle. The grasses are the part that has a definite angle and shape to it, not the water itself. Water always lays flat. So <clears throat> now I have the first layer for the grasses in. And I'm going to repeat some of that transition color from up in the sky. Use it to create a little mist between the grasses and the tree line. Um, the mist is just a haze, some low hanging water vapor which you often get over marshes and mist. You can also use that transition color to help negative space paint. I'm going to use it to create the lines of sky reflection in the water and the tops of the grasses as well. So I'm using the two main colors that I used up in the sky, um, blocking in the reflection of the water so that this looks like that beautiful uh, twilight sky is reflecting onto the marsh water. I want to make sure and warm this up quite a bit. With all of this warmth in here, 
I will counter that with some greens and the grasses and other colors that will help push that back. But for now, I want to get a lot of sky reflection in that water. The middle ground should not be too warm or too cool because warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. So I have a lot of cool in the background, I have a lot of warm in the middle ground. Next, I'm going to be using linear strokes. When I layer one color on top of another with linear strokes, that's called feathering. Those two techniques are the techniques I'm going to use for those grasses in the foreground. I have the underpainting in place. You get a sense that there's a wet, marshy area, that it's reflecting the sky. So now I'm going to take the pastels and make hundreds of little linear strokes connecting them. I'm using three values. The first is the darker value. This is a blue-green. And I'm making lots of thicker, taller linear strokes. The taller they are, the more they come forward in the composition. So these are in the foreground. I really want them to look like they're in front of the tree. I'm going to use a lot of the same colors on the tree trunk. That's the same color I blocked in with. So that darker blue green is a cooler version of blue. So I'm using it just a touch of it in the nearby grasses too to help further that illusion of perspective. Next, this is the same warm color that I already used to block in some of the grasses in the background. It's a little lighter, a little warmer, and I'm going to pull it into the foreground even more than I have it in the background. So that will make that, that warm part of it come forward and will help offset some of the warmth of the grasses that are in the middle ground. Now I've blocked in quite a bit of the grassland and I want to individuate and darken the foreground. Value is key here. The darker shapes should always be in the foreground because the darkest dark is closest to you. Darks that are far away are going to look lighter and bluer because we're looking through water vapor in the air. So here I'm, I'm making that dark look a lot like um, the shadow from the tree on the grasses. <clears throat> creating an edge between the grasses and the water and putting just a touch sideways using that pastel in a different motion to create grasses that are in the middle ground. These grasses are not near as tall as the ones in the foreground, so I don't want them to have any height to them. So I, I handle the pastel differently to show the difference in size. Already you're beginning to see that illusion of perspective. A little bit of yellow to show the yellow clouds reflecting in the water. And now I've got this good illusion of sky reflection as well. I'm softening the edges of some of the grasses so that they're, the edges are lost. And I'm sharpening some of the edges where the grass overlaps the water so that edge is found. Lost and found edges also help create that illusion of perspective. Your eye will follow that found edge right up to the tree. Beautiful. That's got such a nice sense of serenity to it. Now as a final touch, I'm adding some lighter, warmer green to the grasses in the front. My strokes are different. They're more individual. I'm doing a few wildly different shapes to the grasses, some curving in front, some curling, twisting, and that creates a more natural look to them, letting that light overlap the dark. My reference picture is always sitting right next to my painting, always keeping an eye on it as I paint. Now I'm feeling pretty good about these grasses, feeling pretty good about the sky and the water reflection, putting a few finishing touches on it, and then it's time to address that big tree shape. I left the tree for last because it overlaps both the sky 
and the grasses. So I wanted to have a good amount of both of those in place before I jumped in there with the tree. The tree is going to have a lot of the darkest darks on it. And the techniques I use to apply the pastel are daubing or broken color. And this will give the impression of leaves without me having to paint every single leaf. Daubing is the trick of the impressionists. They use it most often to create broken color and optically mixed colors in your eye. I'm using a very soft blue violet. It's got a lot of dark violet in it to create the basic shape of the tree, make it thick. This is a beautiful old oak tree. Oaks have very thick gnarly branches that often go off in different directions and curve around each other. So I'm giving some structure to that tree before I start to put any of the leaves on it. If I am not able to put pastel down because the tooth of the paper is filled, I'll pick up a washcloth and just dust off some of the pastel and then apply. Now I'm using a harder pastel. This is a square shape to it. It's it's going to give me some of the thinner lines. I'm using the edge for that. And negative space painting in with some of the sky colors as needed. Putting in some branches and other trees behind it just to push that tree forward and push everything else into the background. Now for the foliage. Lots of daubs. I'm making a staccato motion. With the pastel, lots and lots of dots, lots of shapes. The leaves are very dark. With oak, they're, they're dark and gray-green. They're not clearly green leaves. So I'm putting in the first layer with the same dark purple color to uh, contrast nicely. This blue-violet will contrast with the orange and the yellows up in the sky really beautifully and create some gorgeous um, complementary color tension for your eyes. I'm fleshing out with some of the darker parts towards the center and then going over the color of the the masses of leaves with the gray green color. Now this gray green color creates texture and masses to the leaves. So there are some that are darker, some that are lighter. I'm always just making tons of little shapes. I'm not trying to paint every single leaf, but tons of shapes. And that creates the illusion of masses of leaves. So always think you're giving the impression. Don't go for perfectionism, go for impressionism. This is still the gray green color, still working on masses and leaf shapes. Now that I have the basic structure of that beautiful oak, I also want to drape some Spanish moss from those branches. When you live in Florida, there are two things that you have to be able to paint in order to live here. One is palm trees, the other is Spanish moss. So before you move here, you have to take an artist test and be able to paint Spanish moss and palm trees. I'm going to use that same gray green color that I used up in the, the tree to create those, the foliage. I'm using it to create a little thin branch, a few thin branches, and it's going to be the main color for the Spanish moss as well. Spanish moss is either gray or very colorful, depending on what time of day you are able to hit it at. So since it's twilight and that tree is close to us, I want to keep everything on the tree pretty dark. So I'm using the very corner of the pastel, starting off with the same dark purple. I'll go over it with other colors, and I'm using a sharp edge on the side and pulling it straight down to make that Spanish moss. Spanish moss is affected by gravity, so it pulls straight down towards 
the ground unless there is a breeze lifting it up. I want to avoid having all the Spanish moss look perfectly spaced or the clumps too even, too much the same. So I'm trying to consciously make some of them thinner, some of them thicker, some of them longer, some of them shorter. Now I'm using orangish red. I break it so that I have a sharp edge to use. That sharp edge will give me more coverage. And I'm putting a, a little line up against the Spanish moss so that you can see some of the sunlight through it. That helps break up the darks and give an idea of the form of the Spanish moss so that it's coming down <clears throat> and overlapping the leaves and the trees. It helps to create a, a shape to the canopy of the tree, make that look a little more rounded, more beautiful. It also helps bring some of the warm and add the contrast of orangish red against the bluish violet. Now you have the effect of an oak tree with Spanish moss dripping from it. Very colorful Spanish moss framing out the focal point of the sunset, having all the lines in the marsh leading towards that sunset. Adding a little bit of brighter orange, pure orange, the true complement of orange on the Spanish moss closer to the light. Oh, those might be a little too even. If I could do this over again, I might break up those shapes so they're not so much the same right there. But I'm pretty happy with it. I think it pulls your eye right towards that point, that focal point. There's a lot of different textures in this painting. I used all five pastel application techniques, including blending, scumbling, the optical mixing of daubing, linear strokes, cross hatching, and even feathering the two colors together, which is part of linear strokes. The only thing left would be dusting. Dusting is where you scrape pastel onto the surface of the pastel painting, and then you push something heavy on top of it. In, in this painting, the only dusting that I would do might be to scrape a little bit of yellow as broken color onto those grasses. Dusting is really good when you have snow or another scattered effect, maybe rain and the street, street scene. So just to show you what I mean, I'm going to take a gold and I'm just splatter painting with it, literally. And then I'm pushing hard on the surface and adhering a little bit of the gold fleck onto the surface. So that's what dusting does. Dusting gives you the sense that you know, there's some anarchy to the way the light is hitting the grasses. It's splattered. So dusting is the pastel version of splatter painting. And that's it. That's all five pastel application techniques in one painting. Hope you enjoyed. Please join me for weekly online pastel classes through my website.